John Prine was beloved by his fans, who are still grieving his loss. Fiona Whelan Prine says they miss her late husband. So does she. What's it been like putting this concert together? It's been difficult. It's been difficult at times, but it's also been a great distraction. Prine's friends have all come out for him. Bonnie Raitt is performing his classic Angel from Montgomery. Casey Musgraves is playing a song she wrote in homage to Prine. And Jason Isbell is singing another Prine standard, Hello in There. You know, when you're listening to a John Prine song, it's very easy to forget you're listening to a song at all. He did, to me, the ultimate trick of, of just making it seem like it was magic. Prine never sought the limelight, but at 73, he'd been in the midst of a remarkable renaissance. He'd sold out Radio City Music Hall, been inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. There is no better feeling in the world than having a killer song in your pocket, and you're the only one in the world that's heard it. It's a really great feeling. And earned a Lifetime Achievement Grammy. On CBS Sunday Morning in 2018, I asked him. Are you enjoying this resurgence? It took some of them 45 years to get the joke. He did kind of get a victory lap, didn't he? He absolutely did. And John being John, as humble a man as he was, um, the biggest thrill was that he got to buy a Porsche 911, <laughs> which he re neither he or I could get in or out of. Um, so what did he do with the Porsche 911? He parked it in the garage. <laughs> John Prine met Fiona Whelan in Dublin in 1988. There was an immediate connection. We were hardly the best candidates to think about, like, let's go off and make a family together. You know, I was 15 years younger than John. Uh, he'd already been married twice before. So why did it work? I think love and persistence. We really worked at staying vulnerable to each other and for each other. Fiona helped him beat cancer twice. Then this past March, after a European tour, both contracted the coronavirus. And the day, in fact, I came out of quarantine, John started displaying serious symptoms. Was that when you took him to the hospital? I took him to the ER. I had to leave him at the door. That was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I've never, I've never not been with him through an illness. Finally, on Prine's 13th day in intensive care, you were allowed to visit him. Yeah, I got a call on our wedding anniversary on April 6th, and the doctor just said, you need to come now, Mrs. Prime. And I honestly wanted to throw up. And I spent 17 hours with him. He was unconscious, but I talked to him. I got to tell him everything I'd ever wanted to tell him. Fiona stayed until the end, but their three sons, Jack, Tommy, and Jody, did not get the chance to say goodbye. How are the boys doing? They're sad. They're sad. John was proud of them. If they never got off the sofa, John would have been proud of them. How are you doing, Fiona? I am, I'm in uncharted territory. Sometimes a friend will call and ask me how I am, and I'll say, I was hoping that you would tell me. But I know too I'll be okay. You do? Yeah, I have, a, I have a resilience. I have the resilience muscle, which is a little exhausted right now, but I'm gonna be okay. John left me a lot. A lot of memories, music, cars. <laughs> <laughs>